Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 22 of the video series in which we program an entire video game from scratch in the C programming language. Last time we were, uh, we had just left off um, starting to create our main title screen menu and we didn't get to uh, draw that onto the screen um, so hopefully uh, that is what we will do uh, this time. However, before we start, um, as usual, we're going to look through a couple of things. First of all, the comments that were left on the video uh, since last time. Uh, commenter says, thanks for adding the assets folder. Um, yes, yeah, so I added the assets folder since last time. Uh, I previously neglected to um, include the assets folder, which includes all of the uh, bitmaps, uh, all of the the sprite animation stuff that we have been working on. Let me get to that uh, directory. Uh, there it is. That assets. This assets folder. See, it has all these BMP files in it. Um, so the idea is that you know the entire point of this video stream is to have you guys um, follow along as a learning experience and I realize that without this artwork um, you simply you just can't follow along and I know that nobody is going to uh, draw their own so um, there's really it really defeats the entire purpose if I don't um, share the assets folder as well so I'm just gonna start doing that next question says uh, nice to see how much progress you made okay next question um, this comment is pretty cool uh, basically he says here's a way to get rid of the M128i incompatible type warning which he's talking about let me build it should pop up right there he's talking about this warning right here and we haven't really done anything um, we haven't really tried much of anything to get rid of it um, other than just me saying you know I'll get to it later um, but here he is uh, he gave us a whole bunch of code for um, getting rid of it not only did he give us the code to get rid of it but he also as a bonus threw in um, here's the AVX version of the function this is the um, SSE2 version uh, and so SSE2 gave us these 128-bit registers so they don't call it SSE2 anymore however they call it AVX the newer version of SSE nowadays on modern uh, today's processors is called AVX and I think that's called uh, that stands for uh, advanced vector extensions I guess let me look it up real quick uh, advanced vector extensions yeah um, and so AVX gives us 256-bit uh, registers and then there's an even newer version of it called AVX 512 um, which uh, you really um, need a new processor for there aren't that many process I don't know I don't know what processors out there even support AVX 512 let me look that up real quick um, proposed in 2013 implemented in the Xeon Phi X200 Knights Landing and Skylake X CPUs uh, okay um, there is a Windows API function is feature available or something like this um, let's look that up CPU feature available is processor feature present and so this is what you would want to use um, it essentially I know that in the past in the past we've talked about CPU ID and uh, how you can issue the CPU ID instruction to your CPU and then part it gives you back a whole bunch of bits um, that tell you all sorts of things and you have to you can either parse these bits manually or you can use this Windows API function which basically does all the parsing for you uh, it tells you exactly what your processor um, 
supports and what it doesn't. Um, although maybe it's too old. Let's see, is processor feature present? AVX 512. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I read a lot of interesting uh, blog posts about AVX 512 and they were actually talking about how um, it was not as advantageous for performance as you would originally as you would um, think it is uh, mainly because the uh, power usage required uh, the the power drawn by your CPU spikes so dramatically uh, when using AVX 512 I'm sure that's just a um, I'm sure that's just an issue with like you know the first and second generation of the you know of AVX 512 and they're probably working on making it better and more efficient but um, I guess original implementations were not very uh, were not very good they were very inefficient in terms of power um, alright so I thought that this function is processor feature present would tell us whether AVX was present or not, um, but apparently I've got to find some other. Maybe I got to find some other function because uh, this looks um, too old. Like it will tell us, like it'll tell us if 3D Now instructions are available. Um, it'll probably tell us that. Yeah, it'll tell us if whether MMX instructions are available. You know, but these are all these are like 20, 25 year old. Um, things that you know I don't know if this API function was ever updated for AVX um, but it doesn't matter we're not going to use it anyway because um, I generally don't like to put um, I don't like to put branches in this sort of like really performance critical code this is really hot code and uh, branching what I mean by branching is like putting if statements and switch case statements and stuff like this um, those are actually quite slow um, it's uh, maybe not so slow for situations where your the value never changes but um, uh, in situations where you know sometimes you may follow this path and sometimes you may follow that path uh, in that instance branching is very slow um, relatively speak I mean of course it's 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 nanoseconds but it's still we're talking about something that runs um, you know this runs thousands and thousands of times per second this function does so we need it to be as fast as possible and I would rather not I would rather not introduce um, if blocks into this code you know like for instance I could do like a you know if SSE supported then do this and uh, else if AVX then you know do something else but I don't want to do that I don't want to do that that's why I've been um, that's why I've been essentially gating this code with uh, pre-compiler directives um, instead of putting actual branches in my code uh, is it really gonna make a big deal in the long uh, is it gonna make that big of a deal in the, in the long run no, it's not. Nobody's ever going to notice because uh, this code already runs extremely fast and processors are so fast that you would never notice a difference. Um, you know, but it just makes me feel better knowing that there are no branches in this code, uh, in this function. So, uh, anyway, so back to the original comment, um, which is right here. Okay, so... There's two ways. There's two ways you can do this. Here is the. I'll go ahead and copy. I'll go ahead and copy this commenter's version of it, and I'll put it right here. The SIMD version. 
uh, where it looks very much like mine, only he is incrementing, uh, he is doing fewer iterations to this for loop because he's dividing by pixel 32s per M128i, which is four, basically, uh, because there's four pixel 32s inside of a 128-bit register, right? You can pack four 32-bit pixels in there, right? So, interesting. So, I mean, I think it's it's roughly equivalent to what I, it, it's equivalent to what I already had, basically. It's just that by doing it this way, he's able to use the uh, cast to the appropriate data type so that we no longer have that incompatibility. Um, let's see what it, let's see if it runs. Yeah, it runs fine. Uh, and, it, and it does get rid of that warning to boot. Um, so the other thing that he gave us was he gave us an AVX version of this, which is simply the 256-bit 256 um, 256 register. So I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and put it in there. Oh, of course, um, we don't have, okay, this data type um, underscore M256i is not defined because we did not include the correct header file. Which is M two fifty six I. S M M intran or I M M intran. I don't know. Let's just try one. Apparently not that one. IMM trim dot H. Yeah, it's got to be it. Uh, and I also need to update our
I'll, uh, I'll have to fix all these later. Wow, missing underscore. Uh, we can comment that out for now. Uh, now, let's see, render frame graphics. We need to go to render frame graphics. I <laughs> before we had a quad pixel now I guess we're gonna have a an octo pixel and this is blue green red alpha Okay, eight pixels. Okay, it runs. It's a pretty good frame rate, and uh, if we go to release mode, it'd probably be even better. Thirty-four, thirty-five hundred frames per second. Not bad at all. Um, So the thing is, if you really wanted to figure out the differences between uh, debug and release mode and why the release mode is faster, uh, you would need to look at the specific uh, disassembly that's being generated by the compiler. Uh, for example, I'll set a breakpoint right there. And if you look at the disassembly, uh, if you look down here, you can see that these specific instructions, which what does that even stand for? Uh, VP mall H U W. Um, basically, it means multiply the packed unsigned. Or wait, sorry, wrong, wrong instruction. Stores 256 bits of energy data into A from memory, must be aligned, 32 byte boundary, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it generates a specific, when you're using this uh, MM256 underscore uh, store underscore SI256 uh, in intrinsic, you're essentially issuing a very specific instruction to the CPU that tells the CPU. Uh, that hey this is AVX code and I want you to use uh, these YMM uh, registers that are 256 bit, 
256 bits uh, wide. And you can see that's exactly what is uh, going on. And we're using this V move. What does V stand for? Um, v move. I don't know, but this is probably like double quad unsigned or something. And a double quad is 128 bits. I don't know. We can hash all that stuff out later. Um, but it, anyway, the uh, the important thing to note is is like if you if we go in and reinstate like this original uh, version, you won't find instructions in there like this unless the compiler is automatically unless the compiler sees what you're doing and basically determines because the compiler uh, is so smart and has been so well optimized that it sees what you're doing and realizes that hey I can optimize this stuff so it, it basically inserts these uh, special instructions uh, for you even though you didn't specifically ask for them like we did uh, here so if you go to properties of your project and go to the C slash C++ tab and go to code generation there is a where are you enable enhanced instruction set uh, option and in theory you can use this to test uh, whether your code uh, whether certain parts of your code are being optimized or not and to what degree and with which uh, CPU uh, extensions you can turn off for ex I mean for example I could turn off AVX 512 I can turn off a AVX 2 I can turn off AVX 1 I can turn off SSC 2 uh, in theory in theory however it's not going to work uh, as you'll see in a second because when I click that uh, and then hit rebuild uh, it's just going to ignore that option um, and I think it's ignoring that option because I have it set to 64-bit processor and I think it Visual Studio at least assumes that all 64-bit processors have SSE2 uh, instructions built into them um, okay so apparently with AVA with um, with x86, uh, with the x86 build though, I can turn that off. So let me see if it makes a difference. Or if it even runs. It does. It's running and it's running about the same speed. Let me set a breakpoint. Yeah, see, it's still generating. It's still generating the same uh, AVX disassembly. So I don't think that that has that code generation uh, option that we selected has any uh, effect or wait let's see no can I do no enhanced instructions can I at least turn everything off I think so all right let's see if that runs uh, didn't matter does not matter. Still generating AVX instructions, still using AVX registers. I don't know why. Yeah, 1400, uh, 1300, 1400 FPS still. Does not matter. Not set. Um, inherit from parent or project defaults. Like I said, I'll go back and fix these if defs because I want to have them all uh, work. Uh, all three cases, whether it be AVX or SIMD or just completely not optimized at all using no SIMD. And I guess technically that should be SSE instead of SIMD because AVX is SIMD also right so I guess I'm just being pedantic anyway uh, so that does it for the comments however
there are a couple more issues uh, that if I go to the GitHub repository for this game, uh, you will see if you look right here, I have two pull requests. Uh, and these two pull requests, they were opened four days ago by Corey P. And this one says, use environment variable for game B path. He says, um, you know, it's got some hard coded uh, things in there. Like the directory has my username in it, obviously, um, which is not portable. Uh, so let's see what exactly he's changing. If I click on the commits tab, here we go. He's basically changing. Uh, this is in that batch file that I wrote uh, that, to copy the assets folder into the working directory of the game when the game is running under the debugger. Uh, and he basically just he says instead of doing this where it's like hard coded, you should actually just make an environment variable called game B directory and use that instead. So that's what he'll do. That's what I'll do. Um, and, and he's also changing the post build event uh, to remove that hard coded directory. Uh, so yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Um, and you, so we're going to uh, merge this pull request. We're going to accept this pull request. You could do it from either the website or the um, desktop client, either or. Let's just use the website instead. Approve. Submit review, changes, merge pull request. This branch has no conflicts with the base branch. Let's merge it. Environment variables, confirm merge. Good deal. So now if I go back to my desktop client, Pull origin, um, my local changes. I got a stash before I merge, so can I? I don't want to discard. I want to stash them. Okay, commit or stash. You know what? going to let's see playing with AVX playing with AVX I'm going to commit push okay Press discard to discard the unsaved changes and load the updated project. So I'm going to hit discard. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to go and create an actual environment variable. Set game B directory. And it needs to be. this directory c colon slash user slash ryan r slash source slash repos slash game b oh yeah i need an equal sign sorry equal sign there okay Now let's see what happens. Uh, first, let's go see if that actually changed it over here. If I look at this batch file, 
go to edit you can see that it actually did update it so that it has that environment variable in it and yeah so it should be fine should work perfectly fine Okay, the command game b directory slash copy assets dot bat exited with code 9009 why'd you do that why did you do that oh um Let's just let's just look here. Okay, uh, completely forget about the post build step. It's more trouble than it's worth right now, and it's really, really annoying me. I don't care anymore. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Okay, back to the other pull request. Fix uh, warning. C okay, all right, cool. Um, this is the other way, and you can already tell that there's going to be a conflict because we've already been working on this uh, code. Um, he actually fixed the compiler warning as well by simply adding a cast. Uh, that's all he did and that works perfectly fine uh, to get rid of the uh, compiler error. That being said, we've already modified all of the code so I'm not going to um, not going to approve that pull request. I think I'm probably just going to um, delete it and um, that'll be the end of that. That being said, um, you know, please feel free to uh, submit pull requests if you like, if you have something interesting that you really want to see um, get added. Um, I will definitely look at pull requests. So let's see, where did we leave off last time? Uh, we were working on menus, right? 
we were working on uh, menus, but before we can get before we can display that menu, I have to introduce yet another concept uh, into our game, which is essentially um, we need basically a game state enum, and I'm going to put it right. wherever my other enums are. Here we go. I like to keep all my enums together. Type def enum game state. Okay, we're gonna call these. Uh, so it's essentially what state is the game in. So I'll show you what I mean. Game state title screen game state uh, overworld we'll say game state uh, battle game state uh, what's another one I'm sure we'll probably have lots um, option screen maybe uh, I feel like there's this is a I feel like there's going to be probably, I'm probably going to want to do like a sort of, if you, you know how right now when you hit escape, the game just instantly quits. Um, of course, I don't want to keep doing that when we get, and as we continue to build out this game, I'm going to have it to where if you hit escape, or if you hit the back button on the controller, or if you navigate through the menus and hit exit game, or exit to desktop, or whatever it might say, instead of immediately exiting, I'm going to add a are you sure uh, screen like are you sure you want to exit that's what that is so we got that screen we got the option screen we have a battle screen an overworld screen and a tile screen and I'm just making these game states up they are definitely subject to change I'm going to add new ones I'm probably going to rename some of these we're just going with the flow right now so back over here to main main dot C we need to create a global game state and initialize it and we're going to call it G game state and we're going to initialize it to game state title screen now that's not permanent we're going to uh, in fact that reminds me there's another one I want in here too right I want a game state opening splash screen right because every video game has like a little opening splash screen where it displays the logo or you know displays the name of the game studio or plays a little little uh, jingle or you know something like this um, you know so I'm gonna have that too and that's where the game is gonna start um, but right now since we're working on the title screen we'll go ahead and just initialize that and, and just skip straight to the title screen uh, game state. So the thing with these game states is they are going to we are effectively going to where is my there we go let's start in render frame graphics that's the most straightforward one We are going to do a switch G game state. And in the case that we are on the title screen, uh, that we are in the title screen state, we are going to draw title screen. And break.
in the case that we are in the opening splash screen, we are going to draw the opening splash screen. Uh, and so forth and so on, and then I'll have a default here for uh, if we enter this render frame graphics function and we are in a state that we have not yet implemented, then I'm going to assert game state not implemented, which means our game will crash and then I'll have to debug how did the game get into this state that I don't even recognize because that would obviously be a bug. Okay. We need to define these functions. Draw title screen. Here, and again, um, in time, I will uh, break these functions. I will break these functions out into their own um, files to keep everything nice and organized. I don't intend to keep uh, just you know pasting everything into main.c into main.c. Um, I'm just doing it uh, quickly um, for demonstration purposes. All right, so there's our draw, draw title screen. Let's go back to render frame graphics. And this pattern right here also goes into, we're going to do the exact same thing in process player input because the input, the controls, are going to behave differently and do different things depending on what state we're in. For example, if we're on the splash or the title screen, like if we're at the splash screen, we, the controls will do nothing, um, except maybe start to skip the splash screen or whatever. If we're on the title screen, the controls are going to navigate the title menu, and that's it. If we're on the overworld screen, then the controls are going to uh, walk our little person around like, like they have been doing uh, up, up to this point. Um, but right now, I'm going to essentially, I am going to comment that out, comment that out, there. And so, at this point, our render frame graphics function is essentially complete, with the exception of simply adding the rest of our game states to the screen. Because no matter what, the game is always going to be in some state. It's going to either draw this, draw that, and then it's going to uh, paste the debug info on top if we want it to. And then it's finally going to do the its interaction with the uh, Win32 API to draw the buffer onto the screen, and that's it. That's all our render frame graphics function is ever going to do. So, with that being said, let's go to draw title screen. So, what is the first thing we need to do on draw, draw title screen? I think the first thing we need to do is um, clear the screen probably to black. And um, trying to decide how I want to do this. Honestly, 
instead of using the clear screen function for this, which we really don't need to do, I could just do this. Just set it all to zero. Or wait, sorry, my bad. Game drawing area memory size. There. That'll set it all to black. You know, if I need to set it to some other color other than black, um, I would use the I could use the clear screen function, but for setting it to black, I mean that's that's all you need to do. And the cool thing is uh, Mimset is extremely fast. If you go and um, if you go and look at the disassembly for Mimset, uh, you can't you can't beat it. No matter what you try to do, you can't beat it with any of your with any of the uh, the SIMD intrinsics or anything. Okay, so what else? What, okay, so the reason why I'm doing this now this is going to clear the screen to black every frame, right? It's going to clear the entire screen to black every frame. Why am I doing that? Um, because it's the easiest way to do what I'm trying to do right now, which is if basically if I didn't clear the screen to black every frame, then um, you would have this ghosting issue. In fact, I'll go ahead and show you whenever I start drawing these menus. I'll take this up. I'll take this part away, and then I'll show you what I mean. Um, what, what I'll show you what happens when I don't clear the screen. Uh, every frame. Okay. Now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make a static UNT64T. I'm going to make a local frame counter. And recall that a static variable means that it is a variable that is going to hold, uh, it's going to retain its value across um, invocations of the function. So every time the function is called, the static variable is going to be remembered, essentially. So it's not stored uh, as part of the stack, it's uh, stored elsewhere uh, in memory. What else do we need? Um, and the reason, okay, and the reason why we're doing this is essentially um, we will be able to tell if the title screen has been re-entered or not, uh, depending on whether the current frame, which we know that the the current frame is in the G performance data dot total frames rendered, like if that number is higher than this function's local frame counter, then we know that the user has left the title screen and then has come back to the title screen at some point, which is our trigger. And by what I mean when I say our trigger, it's the draw title screen function's trigger to know that, hey, I need to reset whatever, whatever local stuff that I need to reset because the user is coming back to the title screen. He left the title screen at some point and now he's coming back to the title screen. Simply put, it means, you know, reset all your menus uh, is essentially what it means. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll basically, I'll, I'll show you what it's like when I, when I don't do that too. So it, imagine, if you will, if you're playing a game and you hit escape and you go back to the menu, there'll be like all these options on the menu. And then you, you scroll down to like the third option, and then you pick it, and then you go back to playing the game. When you come back to the when you come back to the menu at that at some later point, the selected item on the menu should be like the first menu item again, right? It needs to reset. Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, we're going to make a last frame scene. Okay, so let's see. Let's 
split string into buffer. The string, what is the string going to be? Well, this is the title screen, so it's just going to be the game name. The font sheet will be G 6x7 font. The color will be, um, will be white, right? Let's just do And then an X and a Y, which um, the X again will be game res width divided by two. Minus the length of this thing divided by two. And the length will be string length of game name divided by two. Does that look right? No, that's not right. The string length times the font, which is G six by seven font dot BMI. Come on, man. with and let's see the y coordinate will be I guess we'll make it uh, 80 okay let's see what happens Oh, that is not right. Let's just make this six, shall we? So we know each character is six pixels wide, so. Okay, so the name, the title of our game is game B and it looks relatively well uh, centered horizontally in the middle of my screen so it's a little low though okay now I want to draw all of those title screen menu items that we worked on last time so I'm going to do four um, menu item equals zero until menu item is less than while this menu item is less than G menu title screen dot item count menu item plus plus blit string into buffer the string, which will be G menu title screen menu item, we're going to index into it as an array name. Does that work? No. Dot items. Dot name. Sorry. Dot items. There we go. And then, of course, our font is going to be the same G6 G by 7. Um, our color is going to be white. And what else? Our x coordinate is going to be 
G menu title screen dot items menu menu item X and I guess we don't have to do any arithmetic if we just yeah I think X is already correct so let me put this let me put this on its own line oops and then yeah then you on the screen by items then you item why What does it look like? Okay, there we go. There's our title screen. Resume, start new game, options, exit. Uh, we're going to have to change that, I think. Okay, finally, we need, uh, we're going to blit something else into the buffer which is going to be one of these funny things here which as you recall remember I made a special case for that in our uh, blit string function which is like right there go all the way to the bottom of this giant switch case thing yeah there you go I made a special case for it and it's that filled in rectangle thing. It's going to be the like diamond or basically the cursor to show which menu item uh, we're on. Right. OK, we're going to print that. We're going to use the same font. We're going to use the same color. And uh, we are going to We are going to put it at G menu title screen dot selected item. No wait. Hold on a second. For the X coordinate, okay. For the X, the X coordinate is going to be G menu underscore title screen dot items, and the index is going to be G menu. Title screen dot selected item, and then uh, it's going to be the x coordinate, and then minus you know six, I guess, because it's going to be a little bit to the left of whatever whatever you have selected, the little cursor thing. Okay, and then the y coordinate will be the same. Title screen dot items, g menu, title screen dot item y and I think that is it there we go resume so you can see now that there's a little cursor that's set on resume and um, which doesn't make sense we'll fix that so that it starts like start new game needs to be on top um, resume doesn't even need to be there because we haven't started a game yet so uh, but don't worry I'll fix that uh, what else okay so see now how um, I can't move anything nothing moves um, because I haven't uh, Going to I have to go to process player input and I have to go right about here and I do switch uh, G game state. K. 
case uh, game state title screen Let's break and case game state um, I guess overworld now all of this stuff uh, all this code that we wrote previously with the player movement, all that stuff is obviously still um, good code, um, but it belongs only in the overworld uh, game state. It doesn't belong in the title screen game state. Notice right now, for example, when I would, um, my debug text is still up, right? But I'm on the title screen. Notice if I press buttons, See how my hero X and Y coordinates are still moving? Uh, that's obviously not the right thing to do. Uh, so we need to basically have the process. We're going to do, um, OK, so process player input. I think I feel like, I feel like, you see how, all right, so we can frame graphics. You see how all these functions are prefaced, uh, prefixed with draw? I kind of want to do the same thing with the input functions, uh, process player input functions. So if I did, if I went to process player input, could I do like, Could I do something like PPI for process player input? Uh, opening splash screen. PPI title screen. PPI overworld. I think. That will be okay. So let's go to main.h and declare these things. Let's go back and define them. And uh, again, you know, this code is going to need to be cleaned up. We're just kind of rushing through this uh, for demonstration purposes. Okay, uh, title screen, process player input title screen. Now, if we do that, the next problem is we are going to need a way to communicate the uh, all of this state, all of this control, uh, these key presses and stuff. We're going to need a way to communicate to all of these functions. Yuck. Either that, either that, or duplicate all of this stuff. Is that what we want to do? Actually, we can go ahead and put all this stuff in the overworld uh, function right now. 
if else copy all that out I'm going to put this in PPI overworld that should be okay no, it's not okay. Put that back where it was. Yeah, so that's the next challenge. Um, Okay, here we go. I don't know, I'm not sure I like this uh, duplication of code that we're about to do here. State. Paste that there, and we're also going to paste it here. I mean, I realized that I could make some other sort of like global um, structure to basically hold all of the state information that I want so that I can access it from all of these uh, PPI underscore functions. Um, but that sounds like that would take a while to do, and I don't want to do it right now. Okay, back up here. Okay, now if yeah, E is down and not down E was down, then G title screen. Or no, sorry, G menu dot title screen dot selected item plus plus. If up key is down and not up key was down, then G menu title screen dot selected item plus minus. Obviously, we are going to need to do if G menu title screen dot selected item is less than G menu title screen dot item count.
And then for an up key, we're going to have to do if g menu title screen dot selected item. Um, if it is greater than, wait, greater than zero. Right? Selected items greater than zero or greater than. Yeah, greater than zero. Let's just run it, see what happens. Okay, it crashed, but that's okay. Um, basically, it just means that I need to stop the game. Try it again. There. There you go. We are now navigating our menu. So I know I'm way over time, so this is where we're going to stop today. Um, but this is pretty cool. We've done a lot of work with uh, game states, and now we're navigating menus. We have a nice little arrow key here and uh, another cool thing is at this point we're finally ready to get into uh, sound because now I have something uh, that actually needs sound like these menus should be making um, little bleeps and bloops as I you know select things so this is a perfect time to introduce sound which uh, should I should be able to do next time all right so yeah that's it for today. And uh, until then, um, let's see. If you have any questions or comments, uh, don't forget to leave any comments on the videos. I will address your comments in an upcoming episode. And also, please don't forget to check out the GitHub repository. Um, it's there so that you could follow along at home. And that's it. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.